Today we've got a classic hard integral to evaluate. So let's see what it looks like. We have the integral from zero to one of cosine of x times the hyperbolic sine of the square root of one minus x squared. So the fact that we've got this square root of one minus x squared in here really motivates us to make a trigonometric substitution to get ourselves started. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll take x and set it equal to the sine of theta. But of course, that means that dx will be the cosine of theta. And then let's also observe that when x is equal to 0, um, theta is equal to 0. And when x is equal to 1, that means theta is equal to pi over 2. So that's going to be how our bounds of integration change. Also, of course, the square root of 1 minus x squared will be equal to the cosine of theta. Okay, so let's see what this looks like now. So we'll have the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of, let's see, it'll be the cosine of the sine of theta. And then we'll have the hyperbolic sine of, let's see, that'll be the cosine of theta. And then we have cosine of theta d theta. Okay, nice. But now, next up, we're going to use the exponential versions of the cosine function as well as the hyperbolic sine function. And we're going to do that while taking, well, let's see, the real part of Euler's formula, which will give us this cosine of sine theta. Okay, so let's see how that might work. So we're gonna have now the real part of the integral from zero to pi over two of, and this is where we're using this cosine of sine theta as e to the i sine theta. So just to reiterate, the real part of e to the i sine theta is the cosine of the sine theta. Given the fact that we know that e to the i x is cosine x plus i sine x. Okay, so anyway, now what do we have here? So now this is going to be equal to, let's see, one half. And then we'll have e to the cosine theta minus e to the minus cosine theta. And then we've got this cosine theta d theta. And what we did here, and by here I mean from this step expanded down to this step, is simply the definition of the hyperbolic sine function in this case. Okay, great. But now, where are we going to go from here? Well, what I'm going to do is combine these exponential functions together. And while I do that, I'm going to bring this half out front. So that's going to leave me with one half, and then we'll have the real part of the following integral. So it'll be the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of e to the cosine theta plus i sine theta. And then we'll have minus e to the, let's see, it'll be minus cosine theta and then plus i sine theta. And then outside of that, we have our cos theta d theta. Okay, so that's looking good. But now I'm going to simultaneously do a couple of things. I'm going to split this into two integrals. And then at the same time, I'm going to use Euler's formula one more time. So I'll take this cosine theta plus i sine theta and rewrite it as e to the i theta, again using Euler's formula. And then a shifted version of Euler's formula will take this minus cosine theta plus i sine theta and rewrite it as e to the i pi minus theta. And that's by simple trigonometric identities. Okay, so just to reiterate, I'll have one half, and then I'll have the real part of the sum of the following two integrals. So zero to pi over two of e to the e to the i theta times cos theta d theta, and then next up minus 
the integral from zero to pi over two of e to the i pi minus theta times cos theta d theta. Okay, so I think that's looking pretty good. And then in this second integral, I'm gonna make a substitution. And that substitution will be to set u equal to pi minus theta. Of course, that means that du is minus d theta, but then cosine of pi minus theta just turns back into the cosine of u. But that'll make cosine of theta turn into minus cosine of u. And in fact, in the end, we'll pick up three minus signs, which will switch this minus sign to a plus sign. So we get one minus sign from the d theta, one minus sign from the cosine theta, and then let's see, another minus sign from changing the bounds of integration. So I'll let you guys write all of that down if you need to. Okay, so in the end, we're gonna have one half and then the real part of, so I'm just copying the first integral, so that's gonna be zero to pi halves. We have e to the e to the i theta, cosine of theta, d theta, and then plus the integral now from pi over two to pi, that's from swapping the bounds of integration because notice with this substitution, it goes from pi to pi over two, and that's one of those minus signs that was built in. And now this is gonna be e to the e to the i u times the cosine of u, but I'm gonna switch that back to theta. So e to the e to the i theta, and then cosine of theta d theta. Okay, great. And then from here, well, I can smash these integrals back together. So I have one half, and then I'll have the real part of the integral from zero to pi of e to the e to the i theta times cosine of theta d theta. And then what I'll do from here is I'll take this e to the e to the i theta and expand it as its Taylor series. So let's see, that's gonna give me a one half. We have the real part integral from zero to pi of, now it's gonna be, I'm gonna write this cosine theta out front and we're gonna have the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of e to the i n theta over n factorial. Great. And like I said, that's from doing that expansion of, well, e to the e to the i theta as its Taylor series. Okay, great. But now what I'll do is I'll bring the summation outside of the integral and I'll take the real part of e to the i n theta. And so let's see, that real part of e to the i n theta is the cosine of n theta. So that puts us back into an integral with only real components. So that's pretty nice. Okay, so that's gonna give us a one half and then we have our sum as n goes from zero to infinity of one over n factorial and then our integral from zero to pi now of this cosine of theta times the cosine of n times theta d theta after doing that blue substitution that I just talked about. And now from here, I'm gonna take this cosine of theta and cosine of n theta and use one of these product to sum formulas to simplify it a little bit. So in fact, there's a product to sum formula that says that this is one half cosine of n minus one times theta plus the cosine of n plus one times theta d theta. Okay, so let's see what that's gonna give us. So in the end, we're gonna have a quarter, and then we'll have the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of one over n factorial, our integral from zero to pi of the cosine of n minus one of theta plus the cosine of n plus one of theta, and then d theta. And now, well, I'll leave a bit of a homework exercise, and that homework exercise if, is that if n is not equal to one, this integral becomes zero. And so, well, you can kind of see it happening. Notice that if n 
is equal to zero, what do we have? We'll have cosine of minus theta, and then let's see, cosine of theta. But let's see, cosine of minus theta and cosine of theta will turn into two times the cosine of theta given the evenness. That'll integrate back out to sine. Sine of pi and sine of zero are both zero, so that zeroes out. And then we have a similar structure occurring when n is bigger than or equal to two. Now, if n is equal to one, what will this collapse to? Well, we're gonna have this quarter and then our integral from zero to pi of, well, cosine of zero theta, which is just the number one, plus cosine of one plus one theta, in other words, cosine of two theta. Great, so like I said, this is the n equals one case, which is the only case that survives. But now the cosine of two times theta will integrate out to zero because we're integrating out from zero to pi again for pretty much the same reason that we had before. And then the integral from zero to one of one d theta is simply pi. So that's going to give us pi times a quarter. In other words, pi over four. And that's our final answer. And that's a good place to stop.